I find the structure of the ear to be quite a lot more simple than the structure of the eye. But the problem is, or the challenging part is, the processes that occur in the ear. Because you're dealing with this area here mainly, with the receptors that are invisible to us through this picture. But let's break down the structure of the ear into the three main parts. You have the outer ear, which is the part that you can see. And if you put an earbud or your finger into your ear, you're putting your finger in this area here. Then you get your middle ear, where a lot of infections occur, with the three tiny bones in there. And then you get your inner ear. Now, your inner ear is where the business end of the ear happens, with hearing taking place in this area and balance taking place in that area. So let's start with the outer ear. This structure over here, the part that you can see on the side of your head, is called the pinna. Now, the pinna's job is to trap sound waves. So any sound waves that are coming in to the pinna will be directed in towards the auditory canal, which is the next part. So the auditory canal is this whole long area here that you shouldn't stick earbuds into. And the auditory canal is lined with wax and small hairs. The wax is called cerumen. Um, that's another name for it. But the function of the wax and the hairs is to prevent small organisms from entering the ear. But the wax prevents this eardrum at the end from drying out. So if you were to be putting an earbud into your ear and pushing it deeper and deeper, you could even cause um, the wax to harden around your eardrum, which would obviously be a problem. So the eardrum has another name called the tympanic membrane. But what I've done in this picture the eardrum or the tympanic membrane is the boundary between the outer and the middle ear. So that is the tympanic membrane, but so is that. But you only have one. You don't have two, but I've just kind of set, put it into each picture, even though this tympanic membrane would be continuous with that bone. So these are the same structure. I've just drawn it twice to separate the different parts of the ear. So that tympanic membrane slash eardrum if we now move to the middle ear, is in direct contact with the first of our three tiny bones. And that bone is called the hammer. The other name for it is the, uh, the malleus. The second bone is called the anvil, otherwise known as the incus. And the last bone is called the stirrup, because it looks like the stirrup of, uh, um, if you go horse riding, where you put your foot into that. So that's why it's called the stirrup or the stapes. So it's one of those things we just want to learn hammer anvil stirrup or malleus incus stapes. And that has quite a nice flow to it. So you can re learn HAS or MIS. Um, but malleus incus stapes, hammer anvil stirrup, it has a good flow rather than stirrup hammer anvil. That doesn't really work. So learn in the order, get used to hearing it in that order. So you know that the hammer always comes first, then the anvil, then the stirrup. Now, this structure at the bottom would connect down all the way down to the back of your nasal cavities. And that is um, when you are going up a mountain or in an airplane and your ears are popping. That swallowing reflex that you do, you chew gum or you chew a sweetie or you yawn or you swallow. And that is all releasing any pressure that is built up inside here through this tube called the Eustachian tube. So that connects down to the back of your throat. So that's why it helps to swallow. Now that you stay chien or you stay chien, check the spelling there, one of the worst words in life sciences, its job is to maintain equal pressure on either side of the eardrum. So on the middle ear side and on this side of the eardrum. So this would be atmospheric pressure, same as what's outside. But you'll hear from, see from the process of hearing that pressure can build up very easily in the middle ear over here. So you've got to ease out the pressure down through the Eustachian tube. Now, again, just like the tympanic membrane is the boundary between the outer and the middle ear, you've got two membranes here that are the boundary between the middle ear and the inner ear. You've got the top one here. There it is. You can see the stirrup there. That's the end of the stirrup that I've drawn like that. That top membrane is called the oval window. So it is literally shaped like an oval, so it's called the oval window. And its job is to transmit the vibrations from these three bones, which have the collective term of ossicles. And those ossicles will be vibrating in the process of hearing. So this oval window's job is to be, it will vibrate when the stirrup is hitting it, like you're hitting a drum, and it will transmit those vibrations into this inner ear area. Now, one key thing that I must point out is that the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear 
all have different substances that are filling them. So the outer ear is filled with air. We know that. The middle ear is filled with air as well, but it's internal air. But this inner ear is filled with fluid called perilymph and endolymph, which is very important for the processes of hearing and balance. But we'll get to that in a minute. So that's the top membrane there, the oval window. The other membrane is this little one down here, which is called the round window. So it's literally based on the shape of it. The one's oval, the one's round. You can remember O is above V, O is above R. So oval comes before round, O before R. And the job of the round window is to release the pressure that could build up in the inner ear into this area here, and then it can be eased out through the Eustachian tube. So let's move to the inner ear. Essentially, there are two parts. There's this part that looks like a tail or a snail or a dog's tail even, and that is called the cochlea. So the cochlea's very important job is hearing. So this is where the hearing business happens. Anytime you're hearing my voice right now, your cochlea is the thing that's converting the stimulus of sound into a nerve impulse. Leading away from the cochlea is the auditory nerve. Don't get confused between the optic nerve in the eye and the auditory nerve in the ear. Now, the auditory nerve will actually have two branches. I'm only showing the one here. But the branch that leads away from the cochlea takes impulses to the cerebrum. Because the cochlea is involved in hearing and the cerebrum, part of your brain, is responsible for your interpretation of senses. Whereas the other branch of the auditory nerve, which will lead away from this part here, will go to your cerebellum. Your cerebellum at the base of your brain at the back is involved in balance. And this is where the business end of balance happens. So there are two parts. You have these funny three tubes that are called semicircular canals. So this is one, this is one, this is one. They're all in different planes to each other. And at the base of each semicircular canal, you'll have these little swollen areas that are called ampullae. And that's where the receptors are found for, um, for when we do the balance, the changes in speed and direction. The other part is this big bulbous area at the base of the semicircular canals, which is probably some of the worst words in bio as well. The whole structure is called the vestibule. But if we break it down and look inside it, you actually see that there are two parts. And those two parts are called the sacculus and the utriculus. So often you can include all three words in your answer about balance. So the vestibule with the sacculus and the utriculus because they are all within each other. So the semicircular canals are involved in balance, but involved in balance when we're dealing with the changes in speed and direction. So think about running around, playing a soccer match, dodging, passing a rugby ball, turning, wrapping around the other player, etc. Whereas the vestibule is involved in balance when you change the position of your head. So when you look down at your workbook and then look up at the teacher in front of you, look down, look up. There's no change in speed and direction. It's just simply looking down, looking up, looking to the right, looking to the left. So the one thing that's very challenging to understand about the structure of the ear comes in here with the inner ear. So you see this typical shape with the semicircular canals and the cochlea, the snail tail, etc., but actually, that is all bone. So if you look at an image of that, that will be bone, surrounded by bone. But if you look on the inside, there's almost an exact replica of the bone structures traveling around on the inside of the cochlea and the semicircular canals. But it is a membrane. So this blue structure that I've drawn in here, that is now a membrane that is filled with fluid. So I spoke about the fluid of the inner ear. You've got your bony layer. Now, if I just zoom in a little bit on this area here, if we've got the bony layer, so this would be bone. We are drawing in red there. Now, this would be a fluid called perilymph. So peri means upon or on top, and it's a type of fluid called lymph. So I'll just write that at the top here for your little key. So that is perilymph, and it is found within the bony area. Now, the blue area is membrane. But inside the membrane, which I can't show you because it's covered in a membrane, but inside, floating in the membrane that is all the way around here, is a fluid called endolymph. So endolymph means it's on the inside. So when we look at hearing, we look at a cross-section through the cochlea. 
we say that the fluid in the perilymph and the endolymph will move. So we're talking about there's a fluid on the outside here that the membrane is floating in. And that fluid is perilymph. But because the fluid is moving, this is just a soft membrane. Then that means the membrane will move and the fluid inside the membrane, the endolymph on the inside will also move. And it is in the endolymph where the receptors for hearing and for balance are found. So there are receptors sitting inside the endolymph all the way in the cochlea that will determine the sound that you are hearing and the balance direction that needs to be corrected. So the videos on balance and hearing will follow. But just try I have a basic idea of the fact that there are two different fluids inside this ear, the perilymph and the endolymph. And in the next video, we'll unravel the cochlea and make it into a straight line rather than the spiral structure. It's a little bit easier to understand.